sell this here, the old Mahindra 3X. So it's the first time ever uh, in India, at least, that uh, someone has not only given the car a facelift, but also given a facelift to the name. Yes, this car used to be called the XUV 300. The silhouette is identical from the side, but the front end and the rear end gets a very dramatic change. Now uh, you get this huge beam of light, of course, projected in the top, and uh, you also get the fog lamps here and of course a very different grill there's a C element over here which has daytime running lamps across it but what do you think of the looks I think when they've overdone the looks of this car at least from the front the rear end looks very stylish but the front I think it's a little too dramatic over dramatic rather but I think that a lot of people these days prefer cars which have a very striking and a very bold look and that way this car definitely stands out from a sea of other compact SUVs now the changes on the side you get new 17-inch wheels in place of 16-inch wheels. But apart from that, the silhouette is more or less the same from the side profile. Now we'll flip the car around and show you the rear and then talk about the rear and then get inside and tell you about the changes. The prices of this car start from 7.5 lakh rupees, which makes it exceptional value for money. And also, uh, even the base version gets disc brakes as well as six airbags. And of course, the top of the line version gets this ADAS suite with all the cameras and sensors. And that's uh, not all. You also get the biggest sunroof in the segment along with a host of other features so if you want to know more about this car all its features how to drive the space and stuff like that stay tuned to this channel right till the end and if you come here for the first time then please like share and subscribe You also get uh, this uh, very well sculpted bumper so it's a very heavily remodified face power uh, creases over here as well but what do you think of the looks I personally don't really like the aggressive stance of this car it doesn't really have that same cohesive look that the early version had but to each his own I think a lot of people love aggressive looking cars and a lot of you who enjoy these aggressive designs will definitely think that this is a good looking car but as I said the previous generation with those square and boxy lamps had that essential SUV factor anyways let's move on to the side now if you move on to the side you'll see these new wheels uh, these are 17 inches the earlier version was 16 inches so these should improve the grip levels as well as improve the ride quality and uh, the rear end is the big difference because side profile is more or less the same they haven't changed much on the side but the rear end has uh, a small or a small but a massive change as well and that of course is that you now get this huge connected uh, design for the beams and of course again c-section carried out from the front the c-section theme from the front is also carried at the back and of course very heavily sculpted bumper at the back as well and of course this huge 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 branding of xuv3 xo over here and ax7l uh, which is the variant is also written over here so these are the big changes what do you think of the looks the back end definitely i think is more appealing but the front end isn't as cohesive as the boxy design of the previous version of the car. Now, since I'm over here at the uh, back end of the car, let me show you the boot as well. Now, this has been the biggest agile heel of this car. Uh, 295 liters, which is the smallest boot uh, in its segment. And uh, all the cars, including the Sonnet, the Nexon, as well as the Brezza, and even the Venue, has bigger boots than this car. They all have bigger boots. So that's one area where this car is slightly behind its rivals. Also, there's a huge loading sill, so you'll have to really use your back to put in those uh, big bags and boxes and remove them. It's not a slide in and slide out kind of affair. But I think that uh, for regular weekend getaways or maybe three or four days up the hills, you can easily accommodate three large pieces of suitcase and maybe one small suitcase or maybe two super large suitcases and one small one. So it is quite okay in isolation. But yeah, since we are comparing these cars or talking about its rivals, it is slightly behind. Anyways, that's about the exteriors and the boot. Let's jump inside and show you how the interiors are and what have been the new changes. Well, so the first thing that I told myself as soon as I entered the cabin of this car is, uh, well, I didn't tell myself anything. I had to pinch myself and I asked myself, is this really a compact SUV? Because the features on this car can actually outclass and outshine some mid-size SUV. It really is that good. For example, you get dual zone climate control on this car. Uh, which is something you don't get on a lot of uh, mid-size SUVs. You also uh, get different driving modes, which you don't get on a lot of other mid-size SUVs. You also get ADAS Level 2, which is something, again, missing on a lot of mid-size SUVs. And, of course, completely digital dials, which, again, is missing on a lot of mid-size SUVs. Uh, automatic headlamps as well, and electric parking brake with auto-hold function. Again, things which uh, some of those mid-size SUVs miss out on. So, really, in terms of the value for money quotient, this car is top class. You also, of course, get a big uh, Herman sound system. And of course, this uh, touchscreen is quite good. Uh, it is a 10-inch touchscreen, which really is good. The only negative is that the 
rear view camera isn't the best in terms of the visibility here. The uh, definition isn't very high, so it could have been improved. But other than that, uh, minor irritant, it really is packed. It really is packed. Technology is there, the features are there, and the quality also is generally very good. Very good plastics all across. Some on the lower part uh, can be, you know, better, but overall, large windows. And uh, as I said, in our class is not only compact SUVs, but also mid-size SUVs when it comes to pure space as well as features up ahead. Let's have in the back seat and see how good that really is. Well, then I'm in the back seat of the 3XO and if your primary objective is to be sitting in the back seat and you want a compact SUV to offer you the best amount of space as well as comfort, then this car is second to none. Yes, uh, knee room is available in the loads, headroom also is quite generous and it's generally a white car at the back which means that you can easily have three occupants over here. Uh, now you do get three headrests as well, which is good in terms of safety. Then you also get a big armrest where you can keep a couple of beverages for those long distance journeys. Windows are nice and large so you never feel claustrophobic and of course you have a huge sunroof which goes all the way till here. So if you open it up at night you will definitely feel very cool and very classy inside this cabin. Couple of AC vents, USB type C and 12 volt charging as well as a big place to keep your cell phone and of course big pockets at the back as well. In short what I'm trying to say is that this is the best car in terms of space comfort as well as an opulent uh, feel. Now these uh, off-white seats, they really do look cool and they offer you, you know, a sense of airiness inside the cabin but there's a negative as well, they can rather soil easily. So if you're someone who always has sweaty passage inside the car, your kids from school, they always keep coming after, you know, playing, then you'll have some very heavy dry cleaning bills but they look very good and they have a very positive vibe inside the cabin. Back seat gets a good score of 9 out of 10. Well, so here I'm driving the Mahindra 3XO, yes, uh, this is a 3XO and I have to say that uh, whichever engine you choose, you could choose the petrol, you could choose the diesel, whichever one you decide to choose ultimately, the refinement levels on this car are very good, especially on the petrol and Mahindra engineers have worked on the overall chassis, they've worked on the sound editing material and they've made a lot of improvements on this car, it really is a very well improved package. Uh, even if you drive it hard, you might take it up to 4,000 RPM, 4,500 RPM. Even then, it remains a very quiet cabin to be in. Very peaceful to sit inside this cabin. And even the city driving this car is a very easy breezy affair. The reason for that, of course, is that uh, the controls of this car are very light. Yes, uh, you can talk about the steering control, you can talk about uh, the gearbox, the clutch, all the actions are very light. Uh, and of course, you can also choose the automatic version that I'm driving at the moment. Uh, the gear shifts are decent in this version as well and I have to say that it doesn't really matter which engine you choose the refinement of this car really makes uh, you feel like you can go on those long distance journeys without any fuss whatsoever so that department also is taken care of it's sorted and you'll really enjoy the overall experience of this car what you will also really appreciate about this car is the ride comfort the ride really is very good uh, slow city ride even fast highway speeds all of these things are taken care of and uh, you don't really have any issues whatsoever with these things as well. Uh, slow, the ride comfort is good. I think it's one of the best cars in the segment for ride comfort. Now, the steering wheel is ultra light on this car, so that's something that you'll have to be a little careful about. And that is something that, you know, some, you know, buyers will say, well, you know, other cars offer you better driving pleasure, but uh, that is give and take. Some people prefer lighter steering wheels, some people prefer slightly heavier steering wheels. It really depends on what you want and uh, what your take is in that department. Well, so what's my final verdict with this uh, 3XO? I have to say that the Mahindra XUV 300 has always been one of my favorite compact SUVs. It's always been a great car for keen drivers. It's always been a great car for people in the back. It's always been a good car in terms of features as well as the build quality. And with this one, uh, Mahindra definitely has taken the game one notch up. The features are excellent. The backseat experience is really good. And of course, the drive experience also is generally very good. And the pricing is really the icing on the cake now. Yes, the new prices make this car a very compelling buy. So if you're in the market for a compact SUV and you're planning to buy your first or your second compact SUV, then this car is a very worthy buy. Definitely go to Mahindra dealership, check it out, and I'm sure you'll be just as impressed with it as I've been today. I'll give it a strong score of 92 out of 100. Today, I have with me is a CNG car model 
with a bit of surprise element to it from Tata. It is Tata Tigor CNG which also offers 5-speed automatic transmission. Interesting, right? Well, Tata Tigor, a compact sedan, has become the first car to offer this CNG as well as AMT transmission option. I'll be very honest with you guys. Other than this combination, a lot of things are unchanged in this car. Still, we are going to give you a closer look in today's video. Hi, you're watching Time Strive. It's me, Pavni Jain, and it's time to get into the details of the car, experience the drive to know how this unique combination works, and know more about the Tata Tigor. No, nobody can stop us. We the warriors, yeah, we got the throne. They say you the greatest. I'm gonna take that you won't be Let's begin with the design and the looks on the exterior. I'll begin with the front grille. So the first thing you'll notice here is the Tata's moniker right in the center. You get a lot of piano black finishing on the grille and there are Y-shaped letters inserted into the grille as well. These Y-shaped letters gets a lot of chrome finishing which makes it look really very neatly arranged. Other than that, you'll see some chrome finishings right here as well. On each side of the grille, you'll find the headlamp cluster wherein you'll see the projector lamps and also some chrome finishing on the headlamp as well. Right below the headlamps, you'll see the fog lamps again with a lot of chrome finishing on it and you also get some chrome finishings here as well on the air dam. Speaking for the chrome finishings, you get some noticeable finishings right here on the windows and also on the door handlebars. Other than that, you get the ORVMs which comes in piano black finishing. Now the overall side profile looks really neat just like the front arrangement. As for the tyres, you get 14 inches with 175 section steel wheels. Yes, you do not get alloy wheels here, although the specifications for the spare wheel are different. So this is what I wanted to tell you about the four wheels that are here with this car. Now let's talk about the rear side of the car. Let's begin from the top of the rear. You'll get to see the shark fin antenna, integrated spoiler and then you'll get to see some badging right here on the rear side. You'll see the camera here which helps you in reversing the car. It also comes with adaptive guiding lines which is really nice and useful. Then the number plate housing and some sensors right here. Again, some favourite chrome finishing of Tata because you get to see some of it right here as well. The spare wheel I was talking about is at the bottom which is here, a tricky place to find it out if you are a first timer. Alright, so one of the concerns for a lot of prospect buyers with CNG cars is definitely the boot space. Let's check out the boot capacity of this one. Well, I believe you do get some practical and, you know, decent enough boot space with Tata Tigor because the twin cylinder, CNG cylinders, is right here. Guys, did I talk about the fuel tank or show it to you? Well, this is how it looks from inside. You get the petrol nozzle here and you also get the CNG nozzle right here. But one little thing that I want to mention is the functionality of this little silicon button right here. I'm not going to actually tell you guys, but you really need to head over to Time Drive social media pages, especially Instagram, where we tell you in detail what this means. Let's get inside the car and know it more. Now it's time to get inside the car and know how it looks from the inside. So here you get a three-spoke steering wheel with mounted controls on it, wherein you can put everything on mute as well, just like I did now. Right behind the steering wheel, you'll get to see the levers for indicators on the right and for wipers on the left. On the indicator lever, you'll also get an option to put your headlamps on automatic. So you can switch it on and it will do the magic on its own. Behind the steering wheel, I'll get to see the instrument cluster, wherein you get to see the tachometer, speedometer and also the lever wherein you can see the trips, trip A, trip B and also the odometer. Coming to the infotainment system, you get a 7 inches of infotainment screen by Harman which reminds me that this car also is equipped with 8 speakers in total. Right below the infotainment system, you'll get some physical buttons to function all the features that are inside the car. There is also an option which says CNG which can easily allow you to switch between CNG and petrol whenever you want to even when you're driving the car. Now below that, you also see one 
fully uh, automatic temperature control system as well which is really very useful you get two big dials you will get to see the charging uh, ports right below that as well there is a usb a port there is also a type c port which generates 15 watt of charging system then you also get a 12 volt socket right here you get some storage space right here then you get some cup holders some more storage and another socket right here okay speaking for the glove box you do get some more storage right here but that is not what i want to show you guys one unique thing i want to show you is that you get some extra space to store your extra screen which means if you are carrying a tablet with you there is an option to keep it inside the glove box interesting let me know in the comment box now coming to the upholstery it's comfortable enough i had this car for a very brief period of time with me it felt comfortable while driving but i doubt if it will be still very comfortable even for longer hours of drive it comes with leatherette material which gives an elegant kind of look to it now commenting on the finishings you get some piano black finishing on the infotainment system you get some chrome finishing on the ac vents and you also get to see the chrome finishings on the door as well oh before i move on to the second row i just want to mention one thing which i find it personally very useful and that is you get an extra mirror for on the visor on the driver side i mean that's so much convenient now let's move on to the second row Right. since I adjusted the front seat as per my physical stature there is a lot of uh, space that is left in the second row at least for me the car feels super palatial there is a lot of space as per the headroom the shoulder room and even the knee room you do get three point seat belts right here which adds to extra element of safety now another thing that is there for rear passengers is definitely this um, armrest cum storage space which can hold up to two cups at the same time feels quite comfortable now there is a lack of rear ac vents which is a bummer but maybe you can compensate that having the extra leg room in the second row but let me know if that disappoint you like the lack of rear ac vents in the comment box now i think that's pretty much about the interiors of the car how about having a driving experience with tata tigor right now all right now it's time to talk about the driving experience with tata tigor cng plus amd variant and uh, we'll talk about uh, engine performance of course because this car offers 1.2 liter three cylinder engine and it also delivers a power of 72 bhp and if i talk about the torque then it generates around 95 newton meters of torque and it also gives you 28 km per kg of cng as well so it's important to talk about engine performance right and the next thing we'll talk about is handling how does the car feel when you're steering it like maneuvering how is it left right so we'll talk about that as well next is of course the suspension how does the driving actually feels when you are crossing the speed breakers your car is in the potholes and everything the last and the most important thing is transmission how well the combination goes when we talk about cng plus amt so these are the elements i'm going to cover in my driving experience let's begin like i mentioned tigor is powered by a 1.2 liter three cylinder engine which creates vibrations causing noise for other road users but the good part is you don't hear the drummy sounds of the car with your windows rolled up while sitting in the cabin if you hold the wheel firmly in the typical 10 and 2 position you will find that the steering is light the suspensions are designed in a way that can absorb bumps giving a smooth ride and grip at the same time suspensions are hard enough for flat handling coming to the 5 speed amt transmission it fulfills your job by not making you tired while driving in regular moving traffic every single day but do not expect your driving experience to be similar to that of a CVT torque converter or dual clutch gearboxes because the AMT gearbox offers an untimely upshift because of which you feel nanoseconds of pauses between gear shifts but honestly that is a characteristic of all AMTs so nothing to worry about
So I've already shared my driving experience with you all. This is what I feel with a Tata Tigor. Now I just want to mention about the safety features. Now why do I want to do that? Because one, Tata Tigor offers CNG specific safety features which is why I think it's important to mention them and two, you will find these features signature to Tata cars which is really very interesting. So to begin with the first and foremost feature is a micro switch. So micro switch is the feature which allows you to turn off the ignition as soon as you are refueling your tank. I think it's a very good safety feature uh, CNG being a volatile gas. The second feature that I want to mention is thermal protection feature. Basically, whenever the temperature increases out of nowhere and the car detects it, it actually releases all the gas into the atmosphere through a special nozzle. The third feature I want to mention about is the safe location of the cylinders. We have already showed you where the twin cylinder have been kept. They are not exposed. They are under the luggage which is actually important and a lot of car makers have started doing that so that's safe and sound as well. And the fourth feature I'm going to talk about is the leaked gas detection. It's a very good feature again. So basically whenever there is a leakage of gas in the car by any accident and you wouldn't know then what the car does is it detects it and it switches from CNG to petrol without telling you. So basically it keeps you safe in every possible manner which I think is very intelligent and it's a good feature that we should talk about. The last and the final feature I would mention is the availability of the fire extinguisher under my Copa Senjo seat. So in case you need it, you can easily access it and keep yourself safe. So these are the features that are CNG specific and uh, they are signature to Tata cars. So one thing that I'm really impressed by this car is the inclusion of these features. is should you spend lakhs on the Tata Tigor CNG which offers AMT version as well? This is what we're going to find out. The introduction of this CNG plus AMT variant of the Tigor by Tata Motors has expanded its line of offering. It's interesting to remember that this is the only car available in this combination apart from Tata's own Tiago. Tata Tigor could therefore be a good option for you if you value operating expenses and are willing to give up some boot room.